All right, so let's talk about data flow in FPGA. So there's going to be three components that we're going to talk about uh, that are necessary to maintain data flow. And first, we're going to talk about the corresponding logic function, then synchronization, and the enable chain. So if we're looking at this slide, we see that the LabVIEW code here is a not function, which corresponds to an inverter in the FPGA hardware. So that's the, uh, that's the logic that we see on the, first, the, on the top third of this image. Now let's take a look at the middle. In the middle, you'll see a synchronization register, and uh, that guarantees that data is output only on rising edges of the clock. Now at the bottom, we see something called the enable chain. So the enable chain section, it includes additional synchronization registers that only output on the rising edge of the clock. Due to the enable chain overhead, each function takes a minimum of one clock cycle. So what is the enable chain doing? It's uh, guaranteeing that the FPGA logic executes in the same order as it appears on the LabVIEW block diagram. In other words, it's kind of enforcing that data flow. So let's take a look at this slide and see how the enable chain affects it. So uh, over here, we've got something that's reading a Boolean value from the host, and we also have a, a not function, and we're also outputting it to a digital line. So if we're taking a look at that, on the bottom you see how there's the enable chain, uh, that enable chain is going to enforce data flow, but it's also going to make sure that each of those items that you see at the top takes one clock cycle. So um, if we look at that total block diagram, that's going to take three clock cycles at least. Okay, so let's continue this topic. So because of the data flow principles that we just talked about in FPGA, uh, we know that each function or VI is going to take a minimum of at least one clock cycle. Okay, and that's because of that enable chain. Functions can run in parallel, so we kind of knew that already, but some functions are dependent on each other, right? So some, sometimes you have um, a string of functions, and those functions have to run in sequence. So let's say, for instance, you had 10 functions uh, that happen one after the other. Well, in that case, that whole sequence is going to take at least 10 clock cycles, right? Because each function has a minimum of one clock cycle. The application can only run as quickly as the sum of items in a sequence, kind of what we just, just described. Another thing to make a note of is while loops have a two clock cycle overhead. So let's, uh, let's take a look at the execution of this while loop. So in this while loop, we see a sequence of, of uh, things going on. And some of these things are happening in parallel, but some of these um, have some, some dependencies on each other. So if we kind of add this up, we see that this code will take about 10 clock cycles. And then also it's inside a while loop. So each iteration, we're going to get a a two cycle overhead from that while loop. So this code is gonna take 12 clock cycles to execute, which seems like a lot considering the functions that we see here. So one way we can optimize this is we, we can actually use a single cycle time loop and that will convert this 12 cycle while loop into something that we see on the next slide. So here on this slide, we see that same code we saw in the while loop, which used to take 12 clock cycles. And now by putting it in a single cycle time loop, it's going to actually only take one clock cycle to execute all that code. Now the way that this is able to do that is a single cycle time loop uh, removes the enable chain, and that's what's going to allow all these functions to execute within one clock cycle. And we'll talk about we'll talk about that more in the next section. Now you can describe data flow in FPGA. Next, we will describe how all code in a single cycle time loop finishes executing within one tick of the FPGA clock.